Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we got an interesting video. We're going to be going over ways to improve your income while learning to code. So how can you make money while still learning? Now, some of these ideas are not going to pay your rent, but they're going to give you some extra cash in case you want to buy a new computer or maybe upgrade some things in your office or just have some extra money in the bank. If you're wondering where I've been for the past week, then you're going to want to check out grindreel.com and grindreel.academy. I put out two new products on the store, they're free. One of them is a front end roadmap and one of them is templates, HTML templates that you can use for your personal projects or website. I also made a course with Josh about Chrome Dev Tools and how to use them. We show you how to use all the tabs and how to, what you can do with each tabs and some of the hidden settings and it's just a really good course. And it's also free so there's no downfall in taking it. I think I've got about eight ideas here, eight ways of making money while making projects and learning towards getting a job or either running your own company, but how can you make money and learn at the same time? The first one and one that I actually tried to do but it didn't turn out successful is Gitcoin. Gitcoin is a website where you can solve issues, bugs, whatever you want on GitHub in return for money. Pretty much you go on this big explorer where you can search up a bunch of issues and bugs. You just find one that makes sense to you. Like this one looks really good. It is expired but let's pretend that's not there. You need to fix a bunch of these functions. It he even gives you instructions and he tells you this one's a top priority and if you finish it you'll get rewarded 150 US dollars. Now what's cool with this is if you finish part of something and someone else finishes part of it then together you will split it or figure it out with the, the guy who opened the issue. What's also cool is people can fund other people's issues so if you're running a project and someone really likes it instead of donating they can fund issues to force more programmers to work on that project. Another version of this is Bounty Source, but I think Bounty Source is a bit more for professionals. As you can see here, there's big rewards over $5,000 US, but these issues are not very small. I mean, this one's optimizing NumPy. That's not going to be easy, and that's not going to be something you're doing as a beginner. But there are some good ones in here, but you got to really search for them. And you're going to have to make sure that you're first in line to solve these issues because there's going to be so many people looking to solve these bugs in return for money. If that doesn't work for you and you want a little bit more risk, a little bit more money, and there's code competitions out there, which is really cool. You could put that as a hackathon, I guess, on your resume. Say, oh, in 24 hours, I built this project, and nearly won $200 or I won $200 or whatever, whatever it is. So here you go and there's different marathons, different hackathons, like this one right here, something to do with an insurance block, you click on that, it tells you the instructions and what happens and then how much you win. First place wins $28. If you're not into those and you want to take your time and not rush and not fight other people for it, then freelancing might be a better option. Now, with freelancing you have in person and online. Let's go over online. What I would do is hit freelancer.com, Upwork, I'm, I'm gonna put a link below for about 50 freelance websites and go and find a issue that someone posted that has no one on it already because the problem with freelancing online is anyone from any country, from any place in the world can freelance and fix that, that problem. So you're stuck with this issue of people who can charge 30% less than you and still make the same profit. Someone living in a third world country versus in Los Angeles, they could both, someone in Los Angeles is gonna need a lot more money to turn a profit than someone living in a third world country. And that's the problem with online freelancing is that you're most of the time gonna get beat by someone who's willing to take less than you. But if you can find private clients online, that's ideal and that's best, but you do need a bit of a reputation, so it's gonna be tough if you have no projects or no previous experience. And to do that, to get that previous experience, to get that first client, the best thing you could do is go locally. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I would do and exactly what I've tried to do myself. First thing I do is pull up Google Maps and search a bunch of businesses in my area. So we got this one right here, and they don't have a website, so what I would do is go to their address, which is shown right there, maybe even give them a phone call and say, hey, my name is Mike, I'm an aspiring developer, and I need to build a portfolio to get some clients for my freelancing company. Would you guys be interested in a free 
website or maybe a website at a very low cost so that I can build myself a portfolio. And maybe they'll tell you yes, but they're probably going to tell you no because they don't know you and you're some stranger and then you're going to go and you're going to find another one. So we're going to go here and we're going to click on this one and oh, they have a website. Let's see if it's really bad. No, it's a pretty nice website. All right. So next, let's go to another one that has a bad website. Oh, so these guys don't actually have a website. They just have a Facebook link. So there you go. There's a possible client. So you go to their door, you walk in, you say, hey, can I talk it to the CEO or to any market? marketing person and see if you guys are willing to work together and then do the whole story. I'm an aspiring dev developer. I'm trying to run my own freelance company or I'm trying to make some money before I get a job. And explain to them the situation. Maybe they'll tell you yes. This benefits you in many ways. You learn to sell yourself. You learn to talk to clients, to be professional and build these relationships. It's a good amount of networking because maybe they know a friend who works at a IBM or Facebook or whatever and they can put you through to them and they can give you some advice or maybe recommend you or something like that. So th those things are usually good. Going out to people that you don't know, going to strangers and breaking through that, like that scared bubble. It's really good. One thing I've tried once and I think I made like a dollar off of it is to monetize your projects, either using AdSense or making it a SaaS. So one example I really like is the app I use to script my videos. It's called Storyline Creator. And as you can see here, it looks really clean, it looks really professional, but I'm really convinced that it's just one guy who made this for fun because they charge about a two euros a month for the service. And I'm sure this guy makes a little bit of money on the side. Maybe it was just a project he was getting towards a job, but it works really well and I love it. The route I went was to put AdSense on my project, which didn't really work out well because I had maybe like a thousand people check out the, the website. But those are both good possibilities and they are pretty effortless and you can add that to your resume. Something a lot of you don't actually think about, or maybe you do, but don't actually do is write a blog and maybe a YouTube channel and document your journey of trying to get a job. One of my friends out there, shout out to Craig Wadding. He's doing this. He's not doing it for money, but he's doing it and he's doing really well. He made a YouTube channel where he posts a bunch of videos on his journey. And now he's posting a bunch of videos of these like calls where he's helping people out. It, anyways, he makes some good content. I hope this video was valuable. It was a really quick one. I wanted to run through all the ideas and see if I can get everything for you guys. Let me know if you've done any of these or got more ideas or think any of these are bad, I would love to know below. I have not done everything here, but I know that if I had to start again, I probably would have tried all of these.